especially from the program where taking a particular text and reading it in three different languages. So we'll read it in the original language, either in Hebrew or Yiddish, and then we'll read it in Ukrainian translation and in English translation. Um, obviously, one of those languages will be home for you, um, perhaps more than just one. But for that other language, I think it's very productive occasion to remember what it's like to be foreign and to feel that call to listen more closely. There's something ethically significant about that experience. Hopefully we can uh, engender that a bit this evening. Now, I mentioned earlier this importance of celebrating the Jewish heritage of Ukraine. Uh, it's indeed an important thing to do, but um, we have to acknowledge that such a celebration can flirt with reduction or kind of selective strategic forgetting, uh, covering up and covering over uh, dark and very painful moments uh, and events in the history of the Ukrainian Jewish encounter. Um, events of abandonment, betrayal, pogroms. Um, these things we're not distancing ourselves from this evening. What we're doing instead, rather, is bringing to mind, and calling to mind, um, the other scene. Uh, the moments that aren't found in archives, that aren't etched in memorial stone, uh, moments in which Jews and Ukrainians learned quite a lot from each other, were inspired by each other, used their cultures to infuse um, the other, who were fascinated by each other, and in fact, um, more or less became each other in a sense. Last week we had a wonderful presentation by um, Professor of Jewish Studies at Northwestern University, Johann Petrovsky Stev. We talked about a number of um, Jews from a territory that is today Ukraine became remarkably Ukrainian poets and identified completely with the project uh, of, of Ukrainian national identity. Um, so we are taking on board the complexity of Jewish Ukrainian relations today, which I think um, are very poignantly articulated by Amos Oz, uh, Israel's very prominent uh, writer and journalist. And, and the words are printed here in your program, but I think we should, we should read them together uh, very quickly before we begin. This is what the Oz said in the pages of Sat Speak back in 1991, and uh, he addressed his remarks specifically to the U Ukrainian reader. My mother was born and raised in Rydna, the Ukrainian town that she brought with her to Jerusalem. She sang lullabies to me in Ukrainian. She told me Ukrainian fairy tales and folk legend in Hebrew. But did she love Ukraine? Not quite. Did she hate it? No. As a child, I felt that the love for Ukraine was bound up with anger, that this anger was bound up with grief, and that this grief was bound up with pain. When I grew older, I understood that this mixture of emotions has a name unrequited love. For long stretches in the history of our peoples, we drew inspiration from each other. This mutual relation often came at a cost, and sometimes it led to something more terrible. But I believe this, in Jerusalem there will always be a peace of Ukraine, and in Ukraine there will always be a peace of Jerusalem. So with that, I'd like to uh, open our readings today, um, and introduce to you, in fact, welcome uh, two musicians uh, that I'm very excited to hear. Uh, Ivan Kravitz and Carol Hines, um, who are part of the Roman Plesma Quartet. And in fact, I, I, I encourage all of you to run out and buy uh, their CDs. I'm going to give the floor to them, but um, uh, before we begin, after the perform, what we'll do is I'll invite the three readers uh, who will take part in uh, the recitation of one text, or perhaps even six if we're reading uh, one poet uh, twice. And if you would just stay here as your, your friends are reading with you. Um, and then when they finished uh, with all the three languages, if you could, of course, in the audience, uh, applaud them for their courage and their, for their talents. Uh, and with that, please join me in welcoming Ilana Kravitz and Carol Ives to the page.
dance tune. And uh, it comes from the repertoire of uh, an ensemble called the Ukrainian uh, Jewish Ensemble of the SSR. Um, and it was recorded quite extensively in the 1930s, particularly 1937-38, uh, in Kiev. And it's uh, one of the few recordings we have of Jewish bands, Jewish ensembles made in Europe. Uh, we listened for this, uh, the revival of the tradition, if you like. We listened a lot to music made by, uh, in recordings made by American bands, often made up of musicians who travelled from Europe who emigrated to the States. Uh, so it's nice to have these resources. And this ensemble is particularly interesting. Uh, Klezmer is uh, Klezema from the Hebrew, which means vessel of song, uh, meaning musical instrument, in fact. And originally it was applied to a musician. We are Klezmorim, that's the plural. Uh, Klezma, uh, Klezma was a musician. Uh, today we use it for the repertoire, uh, the collection of music that uh, refers to the Eastern European tradition it comes from. Um, and one of the main sources we have, apart from these recordings I'm speaking of, um, is a Soviet Jewish ethnomusicologist called Moshe Barogovsky. And uh, he did a lot of collecting in the field from the 30s right through to the 60s, I believe. And uh, there's a huge archive kept in here of his wax cylinders that he recorded in the field. And uh, of course we musicians are all desperate to get our hands on this. And it's locked up in the Kiev National Museum in an archive called the Bernanski Archive. And uh, I was lucky enough to be part of a trip, um, a Klezmer cruise down the Dnieper River a few years ago. And uh, we travelled down visiting sites of interest to uh, mainly emigrate Jews and synagogues. And we were playing in those uh, sites ending up in Odessa, and we went to the Crimea and participated in the inauguration of the new synagogue down there, which is very interesting. So obviously there's not a very big Jewish community left there, but it was interesting to meet a lot of the people who are still living there. Um, so the next couple of tunes we're going to play you are from the Berogovsky collection. Uh, the first is called the Ahaba Raba, uh, which refers to the name of a prayer, which means great love, but it's also a mode in music, which... Um, and it's a sort of semi-improvised piece that recalls the flavour of a prayer, if you like. And we follow that with a, um, another show, tune, actually, Show 185, number 185 from Sarah Boston's collection. And these were collected from violinists who lived um, near Kiev, when Mary Boston went out and interviewed Jewish musicians in a completely academic way. He had a questionnaire, he asked them all the same questions, he asked them about their lives. So a very interesting piece of research. And he also collected songs. Um, songs of the home, songs of work. So alongside that Yiddish literature we were talking about from the Jewish communities of the Ukraine, there is this very rich musical tradition that has been documented and we're now just finding out about.
first poem by Phil uh, is uh, called Il Atsi. And I uh, want to talk about the word this before, but um, a lot of these poems uh, have been uh, put to music in Israel in our popular songs. This being my one. It's a little bit difficult to read this poem, but very well. Feel free to sing. The Shalom Il Atsi, the Lord of Ishmael, the Lord of Kuwa, the Shalom Kuwa. רק עץ ידיים נקעו וירדי שקטים, רק שביל כבשו רגליים בני זרות. אכן דלה מאוד ידעתי לחיים, אכן דלה מאוד נחקתי תל. רק כל תרועת הגיל ביום ייגע האור, רק אוכלים ונסתרים עלי עניין. Не успівали я, і оплакала, не я. Моя діж серця, на тікаю водою, Моя ще сте жіна, хені із Йотана Кіна. А тож, а хет світені, під чісні мій дарунок, А тож, а хет пахенки, а цей дарунок тончен. Діж сором сух веселі, усяєві погоді, Діж хвилені питальки над злітними твоїми. I have not sung you, my country, nor brought glory to your name, with the great deeds of a hero or the spoils of battle yields. But on the shores of the Jordan, my hands have planted a tree, and my feet have made a pathway through your fields. Modest are the gifts I bring you, I know this, mother. Modest, I know, the offerings of your daughter. Only an outburst of song on a day when the light flares up. Only a silent tear for your poverty. פגישה, חצי פגישה, מבט אחד מהיר, קטעי נביאים סתומים, זה די, ושוב הציב הכל, ושוב הכל הסעיר, משבר האושר והרוואי, הסכר שלך בניתי למגן, הנה היה כלא היה. ועל ברכי אחרא, על שפת אגם סואן, לשתות ממנו. ספיטקאי מזוסטריץ', פוחדי בוקרפני, ליבון נזוסטריץ', אליסטלוס, פסר. בבסלובי, בבסלובי, טנקו סליב נזרדני, פרזקובן שצ'אסיה איבולו, פסרס נסרת. Та з тих півнот я хат не пам'ят статів, І все, що зринуло, десь зникло до небі. А я жахучу чисту воду з того ставу, До несхочу, припавши питину в собі. Мілень, гарний мілень запайсес, One good glance, fragments of obscure words, And again waves of happiness and pain sleep over everything and rage. The dam of oblivion I had built in my defense, and if it had never been, I kneel on the shore of the roaring sea and drink my fifth. The next song is a folk song about the founder of the Hasidic movement, the Baal Shem Tov, the good master of the name, good healer, uh, who lived near the Carpathian Mountains in the 18th century. And this song describes his daily route, uh, which lay between two shtetlach. One is Kosov and the other is Kitev. Kosov is Kosov in Ukrainian, and Kitev is uh, Kuti, right? So it's that, uh, it's, it's Western Ukraine. Um, beautiful part of the country. And uh, the Hasidic movement introduced certain new themes uh, uh, into uh, Jewish life. And one such theme was the importance of joy. You know, joy is a serious business in Kazakhstan. <laughs> it's, it's a moral, religious obligation. 
And uh, the other idea, which is closely related to uh, the um, Kabbalistic notion of Shavina uh, Sakhalim, the shattering of the vessels, you know, that everything in this world has a spark of divinity. And the most mundane and seemingly irrelevant things can be redeemed, especially if it's a true tzadah, uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, at work. And the Baal Shem Tov really enjoys nature in this song. And the uh, Hasidim, you know, uh, there was the stereotype about Jews being bent over their dusty books and never leaving the prayer house. But Hasidism in some of these songs and stories uh, encourage people to look around them and to see divinity, to see God in uh, rivers, lakes, forests, and so on. And uh, in this song, there are four parts. The first part is about the Baal Shem Tov visiting a little bridge, Brikele. What does he do uh, uh, at this bridge? Well, he goes for he goes for walks. It's his favorite place for his strolls. The next part is about a river. So, what kind of sacred use can you uh, uh, um, think of when it comes to rivers? Well, he uses it to um, to um, um, bathe himself ritually. Right? Uh, it's a it's 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 a ritual bathing. Uh, then there is the forest, Ahelbel. The forest is good for meditation. His poignance, to stay alone and meditate. And finally, Fagel, Fagel of the little birds. So what can you learn from Fagel of? You'll say nothing. Stay, in, stay with your Talmud. Not so. You can learn the art of singing and music from birds. And that's what the Baal Shem Tov is. Oh, 
Let us see. 